Um, we have a, a great schedule packed. Um, we're going to be starting with Courtney this year talking a little bit about the feedback from what we've learned from the process so far. She's also going to do a quick report out about what happened yesterday for those of you who weren't there or couldn't go to all of the sessions. Um, we're also going to have Sarah Lewis talking a little bit about the Somerville zoning overhaul and place types. So we'll be talking about how these two things relate to summer vision. I'm also going to be going through the proposed summer vision numbers. So the numbers that are kind of the high level summary of Summer Vision 2030, we'll be talking about um, what the updated numbers could look like and start gathering some input and feedback about that. And then uh, finally, we're super excited for the afternoon. Our Brave Summer Vision Committee co-chairs are going to be leading us in uh, discussions about these different working groups that we've been talking about. And so they will be leading the second half of today's agenda. As a reminder, um, we talked a little bit about conference guidelines. It seems like we had such great conversations yesterday, um, but just a reminder that we're gonna be careful about being respectful, using kind and accessible language, um, and that we're gonna practice, if you're someone who talks a lot in conversations, taking a minute to step back and hear from other folks. Um, and if you tend to be on the quieter side, practicing stepping forward, stepping up, and uh, sharing your input. We really wanna hear from everybody. Um, and so just as a quick housekeeping reminder, so we're just gonna be in Union Square today. That's about it. Um, the Wi-Fi information is up if you were not here yesterday. It's IHG Connect and you can use the Welcome for Access code. Um, and then uh, as another reminder, we have these easels up here which we'll still be having going until we get into the working groups. So um, these are a great opportunity if you suspect you're going to be in the community and arts working group but you have some opinions about housing that you want the working group for housing to consider. Please throw up your ideas onto the, the boards. You can use these sticky pads because they're a little easier to write on. Um, and we'll make sure that each of these boards gets incorporated into the working group. So this is a great way to just capture your ideas before you lose them. So I think that's it to get us started off. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Courtney Desir from Summerstat, who's going to talk us through some of the feedback that we've heard already in our process. Courtney? Great. Thanks, Lauren. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me OK? Yes. Since we're technically using a, a kind of a fake mic. Um, so I'm Courtney Desir. I'm the principal analyst in the Mayor's Summerstat office. Normally, I'm working on things like capital planning and infrastructure. But today I get the easy task of warming you up for the day by giving you a sense of what we've heard so far in the Summer Vision 2040 process from both city staff, community members, and our steering committee. But before we get into that, I just want to give you a brief overview of what our outreach strategy is for uh, 2040. So we have three key tenets. The first one is that we want to engage diverse perspectives. We want to make sure that we are reaching out to a wide variety of populations within Somerville and hearing voices, um, and especially from those who don't normally participate in the traditional public engagement process, either by their own choice or they've kind of been left out systematically. Um, we want to, the second tenant helps support that. We want to go beyond the traditional public meeting. This is about meeting people where they are. Uh, the traditional public meeting doesn't work for everyone. It could be due to scheduling conflicts or different levels of comfort with a formal public process. And then, um, so for example, uh, on the slide here, you see a picture of Victor from our team. He is on City Cable with the Summer Viva in Portuguese show. Um, we've been working really closely with Summer Viva to engage with non-English speaking communities in the city. And then the third tenet of our strategy is for constant feedback incorporation. So we want to make sure at every step of the way, what we're learning, we incorporate into the next step or the next event series. And also just to give you a sense of some of the upcoming work that we're doing, we're having some targeted forums. Um, next, this week, we'll be working with businesses and commercial property owners um, to have a forum with them. We'll also be hosting a forum at the Council on Aging. And we're still scheduling forums with persons with disabilities, non-English speakers, and teens. Um, we are striving to have an outreach strategy that reaches many people in Somerville, but we could always use more help. So if you know someone who wants to be involved in the process and hasn't been so far, you can direct them to the Summer Vision 2040 website where they can sign up for our newsletter. Or if they're someone who isn't as comfortable with the internet, have them call City Hall and ask to speak with the Summer Vision staff in the planning office. And of course, you can always reach out to us if you think that there's a group in Somerville that we're missing and that we're not hearing their perspective. All right, so what kind of feedback have we heard so far? 
We've had a chance to hear from staff at the staff summit. We heard from the steering committee members at their first mixer. We've had Somerville stories and summer suppers ongoing. And we'll also talk about what we heard in yesterday's breakout session. All right, so back in December, we hosted over 60 staff from 22 departments for a half day summit, which I wanna emphasize is a really unique opportunity. We don't normally get to work as city staff all together in a collaborative format to talk about the big issues in summer vision. We asked staff to tell us about the successes and the challenges they've had so far in implementing what we laid out in Summer Vision 2030. And then we also got feedback from the staff on what they would like the committee to know as you engage in your working group process. Uh, some of the key things that we heard were that staff are your allies and they share your love for Somerville. They also share a concern that many of you have already voiced around the cost of housing and economic changes happening in the city. Um, they want you to know that the city can't do it all. There are some big challenges like housing or pollution in the Mystic River that require regional partners. And then two other things. Um, one is that they want you to know that on a day-to-day -day basis, they are making decisions based on trade-offs. And these are, this is something that they, they really grapple with and they try to maximize uh, a finite amount of public resources. And this is not to be pedantic or to uh, uh, tell you not to, to push them, but also that a lot of the things in summer vision take time and are challenging and they hope to get some patience from you and hope that you understand that they're working towards shared goals with you. So then in February, we asked the steering committee for their feedback on what the summer vision staff and city staff should know about uh, or should keep in mind as we go throughout the process. Some of the things we heard from the committee members were to ensure that all voices are part of the process and to especially engage the one, approximately one third of the city that's usually underrepresented, and to engage non-English speakers. Uh, you told us not to give up on the 125 acres. And you also said that 2030 was a solid foundation and that we shouldn't be trying to redo that, but that we should be trying to update it. And finally, many of you are already very involved in the community. You have meeting fatigue, and you want us to keep that in mind. So we're trying to design a process that is respectful of your time, efficient, and productive. And then one thing that we heard from both the summit and the mixer is that three topics were missing in Summer Vision 2030, and those are health, climate change, and youth. So we've taken this into account as we've designed both the document outline that Lauren shared yesterday and as we've designed the working group chapters that you'll be diving into this afternoon. So one of the non-traditional formats that we've been using to, to get perspectives on Summer Vision 2040 are Somerville Stories. These are short videos where people can tell us how living in Somerville has impacted their lives. So far, we've been working with Summer Viva to engage the immigrant community in the city, and we have our first videos posted on the website. Um, we've heard from a student, a mother, and a business owner. We've heard from a musician. But we also welcome people to submit written submissions for a Somerville story. And these are just quick anecdotes. They're an easy way to be involved in the process. So for example, um, there was a mother who shared how Somerville's walkability really uh, made her feel when she had her first son. She said, I like living in Somerville because you can walk in any direction and hit civilization. Somewhere to eat, a public place to sit, public transit. She remembers one of the first outings with her son he was in, facing inward in a borrowed baby carrier and she walked from the house down to the 7-Eleven, which is now the Cumberland Farms, and she got two of those Drake's coffee cakes. And she was eating them and dropping crumbs on her son's head, but he didn't seem to mind. And she just remembers feeling so happy that she was out and about and feeling safe with her baby. So these are just simple stories and we hope to keep collecting these throughout uh, the rest of the process. The other non-traditional engagement that we've focused on are summer suppers. How many people in this room have attended or hosted a summer supper so far? That's amazing, thank you. <laughs> um, just a reminder, if you've hosted a summer supper and you haven't submitted your report, you have until the end of the month um, to get those to us. So far, we've received 13 reports. Um, 12 of the summer suppers were held in English and we've had one held in Spanish. You can find the guide and the report forms on the website in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So what have people been talking about? When we first designed the Summer Supper, we thought each one would focus on one topic. But as we've gotten the reports back, we find that people are talking a variety of things. So if you added up the numbers here on this chart, you'll see that there's far more than 13. But the two most popular topics have been housing and transportation. What are some of the concerns that we've heard from the housing donors 
for some receptors. Um, people are worried about the rising cost and displacement. Um, we've also heard that there are difficulties for families, both in terms of finding appropriate unit sizes and discrimination in the rental process. And then finally, there's a concern about balancing the need to increase the housing stock while maintaining neighborhood character and avoiding increased traffic or congestion. You've been able to help us identify some needs early on, including more information on tenants' rights with specific outreach for immigrant communities, um, increased accountability of landlords to make sure that they're maintaining their rental properties um, in a safe fashion, as well as we need an increased inventory of affordable housing, and we need that inventory to be accessible at a range of incomes. Um, on the transportation side, we've heard concerns about bike safety, pedestrian unfriendly sidewalks, as well as a lack of connectivity to jobs. We've heard a lot about the lack of the north-south connection um, and the difficulty from some neighborhoods to get into Boston. So some of the needs that have been identified so far include more reliable and frequent transit um, with better arrival information. And I know this is something that yesterday's breakout session on sustainable transit modes really dove into it and what the city can do versus what we need the state to do on this. We also are being nudged to have increased bike lanes, especially protected ones, and creating a goal around the miles of bike lanes in the city. And you've also told us that our sustainable trip goal, which right now is 50% of new trips are sustainable, is too low and that we need to increase that. And that's something that we're gonna talk about in the summer, number, summer vision numbers session this morning. All right, so breakout sessions. I'm gonna give a really quick run through of what the breakout sessions covered yesterday, but I really wanna hear from you. So we'll get to that at the end. All right, so first we had Kristen Stelgis and Luisa Oliveira from uh, talking about ensuring quality open space. And some key things that came up during this conversation are around defining open space, what is the appropriate definition, as well as um, uh, what are all the appropriate, or what are the uses that we should be considering when we think about open space. Um, we had a presentation from Mike Mastroboni in the budget office, my coworker, um, putting the fun in budget fundamentals. And let me tell you, this was unexpectedly popular of a session. <laughs> um, everyone had a lot of great questions, and I think this was more of a learning exercise for everyone versus a discussion conversation. But one of the key things that Mike got into was how capital investment planning can support some of our summer vision goals, especially around the needed infrastructure for new development. Jeff Curley and Jessica Davis from the Somerville Public Schools talked about the Somerville Learning 2030 process, which so far has been a visioning process around what this, um, the values that matter to community members and families that are in the schools in the city. Um, and this is both uh, public schools and charter schools and every school in the district. Um, two things that really popped out of this conversation. One of the values in the report is around valuing um, attention to social emotional health and access to mental health services. And, it was very clear in the conversation that there's an urgent need to address social emotional health for families, both from the parental side and the children's side. And the things that came up in this are not just related to education issues. Things like transportation, housing, immigration, uh, these kinds of policies are impacting children in the school. So there's a huge connection between the learning process and the summer vision process. Tom Galagani from Economic Development walked us through Development 101 and talked about um, both the development process and some of the community benefits that can come out of development. Um, we heard that we need to have a more transparent um, public process with better outcomes from that process. We also had, it sounds like there was some interesting discussion about how you balance um, the desire to preserve neighborhood character in neighborhoods that may have systematically already have built-in inequities. And so that, that was the topic that came up in a couple of sessions yesterday. Um, and we heard from both the Office of Housing Sustainability and the Housing Division on our three-part housing strategy, which involves assisting residents facing housing insecurity, which the new Office of Housing Stability really focuses on, two, making the most of the current housing stock, and three, creating new affordable housing. And I think that there's a lot of ideas around number three, and I'm excited to hear what the housing working group come, starts thinking about today. All right, almost to the end. So, Somerville Climate Forward, we heard from the Office of Sustainability and Environment on their climate change plan. This was released in 2018, and it's 
focused around mitigation, adaptation, and equity. And I encourage you to check out the plan online. Uh, they have a plan at a glance. It's a one pager, super easy to digest. Uh, and we talked about how Climate Forward is a short term action plan for the next five years and how Summer Vision can pick up where Climate Forward left off and really think about the big vision for climate action in Somerville. <coughs> All right. And then our, I think our second most popular session of the day was around sustainable transit modes. Um, Brad Rawson talked to us about the different, like planning for cars versus planning for uh, people. He showed the, uh, the progression of Bow Street in 2007 where it's very vehicle focused. And then in 2018, we have uh, better bike infrastructure, and then thinking forward to 2030, how Bow Street might become even more pedestrian friendly. Uh, Brad also talked about how the city, even though we don't run the transit system, how we can make it easier for buses to run more reliably and frequently on our streets. Um, we had a representative from the regional planning agency here to talk about sort of the, the bird's eye view at the region. And Christian, he talked about how MAPC has surveyed all of the master plans and comprehensive plans in the community, or sorry, in the region. And some of the, the things that come up in all of these are around improving multimodal connections, preserving and managing open space, and investing in facilities and property. And I think that there's a lot of shared uh, priorities between other communities and us and the, the idea that we need to also be thinking regionally when we're doing our summer vision plan um, was discussed a lot. And then finally, there was this very well attended session on well being where there were zero participants. <laughs> um, unfortunately, everyone was more interested in the regional plan and in transit and didn't get a chance to check out the well being session. But Doug and Lisa from our Health and Human Services have pre had prepared a presentation on the well being report, which was published in 2017, and the food systems assessment, which was published last year. The slides from all of these are going to be available online later this week, so I encourage you especially to check out the health section because this is something that was really missing from Summer Vision 2030, and we want to make sure that health and well-being have a strong presence in Summer Vision 2040. All right, so now I'd really like to hear from those who were here yesterday. I think it would be helpful for us and also for anyone who wasn't here to, to learn what were some of the most surprising or interesting things that you learned about yesterday or what's something that you're now really excited to get working on today? So, any volunteers? And the mic is just for the camera, so try and speak loudly if you can. So, I went to the budgeting because they said, go to the thing you know the least about. And I was fascinated by the information about the budget. I, I never knew anything about how Somerville did its budgeting, and I have to say, it was a really great presentation. Thanks, Alicia. Anyone else? Yeah, I went to the regional planning uh, session yesterday, and I think one of the, the most surprising thing I learned was that uh, when you look through the set of priorities that the regional planning uh, agency uh, listed from its various uh, uh, work around the region, um, the regional priorities are somewhat at variance uh, and fairly significantly, particularly in the housing area, uh, than uh, those that we've articulated here in Somerville. So I think the problem of uh, defining Somerville's role vis-a-vis uh, -vis the role or its, its place and its situation in the region uh, within that set of priorities uh, poses another planning challenge that I hadn't thought about before. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, so maybe thinking after the fact, uh, it was interesting that the Green Line extension didn't come up too much in the discussions explicitly. Uh, and I think that that's something, you know, obviously it's going to happen very soon and will impact all parts of the community. So it's probably, we should keep that in mind and think about it holistically and, you know, not forget about it in terms of kind of each individual piece of the, uh, of the agenda, if you will. Yeah, in, in Brad's session, we learned that uh, when transportation systems are extended into communities, it tends to attract more affluent families that also bring their cars. So just getting the Green Line extension does not mean automatically we're going to have a reduction in cars. And in fact, 
uh, the net number of cars in Somerville has increased over the last 10 years. That was a surprise to me. Yeah, I, I thought um, I talked to Christian after who presented on the regional planning, and I was it just made me thinking like we might need to be like ambassadors to different communities and and ask them like for help. Maybe not to be afraid of height. I guess at the Woburn City Council a few weeks ago, you know, people came out on mass to uh, you know fight against a five-story building. And it's like, we're, we're like, okay, we want to build and, and housing and, and maybe, you know, just starting to talk with other communities. And some, sometimes when you put a, a, a face, like we're from Somerville, we kind of need your help. Would you think about like just trying to engage regionally is something that I thought about. One thing that I uh, noticed was that um, this may be a little bit of nitpicking that although you mention jobs in your report, the path since 2010, you didn't really have any notion on these on these stickers about jobs. So that's that's implied by commercial development, but it's an important thing to Somerville, and we should we, you should make sure that that's that that's part of the process. The second thing was and this was mentioned just now in terms of collaborating with, with other cities around us, we have a difficulty with getting 128 acres in our, in our four square miles, and perhaps we could work out some way of collaborating with our neighboring, with our neighboring cities to make use of their open, open space, for instance, that the great strip park on, on the Everett side across from Assembly Square maybe provide some kind of access to it. All right. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? We have time for one more. Uh, it was brought up in the uh, housing working group, or maybe after it, that um, Holly with the East Somerville um, Community School. And the improvement to the school means that people get pushed out of the neighborhood because suddenly there's a great school. And I think as the green line comes in, we need to be thinking a lot about mitigating the impact of that because having the transit access will encourage people to move into areas that historically are, have been the only affordable places. Thank you so much, Courtney, and thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts, <clears throat> excuse me, um, from all the great work yesterday. We're excited to dive back into it today.